Welcome back, everybody. We're going to talk about methods of depreciation now. There are three methods of depreciation that you really need to understand. The first one is straight line. The second is double declining balance. And the third is called the units of production method. At the top of the screen, you see a bunch of orange data. These are givens that we'll use in determining what our depreciation expense under all three methods will be. It's a little squishy because I want you to be able to see all three methods side by side and how they result in different uh, ending depreciation expenses across the years. And down at the bottom, we'll capture that side by side under the schedule of depreciation expense. So there's very little room here to do the work, so bear with me. Uh, here we go. Using the data above and the straight line method, you can see a formula there. This is cost minus S. B. That stands for salvage value, also called in many texts residual value, interchangeable terms. It means how much you can sell the asset for when you're done with it at the end of its useful life. So what we're going to say here is our cost for that truck that we bought was $25,000 and we have to subtract the salvage value because the IRS is only going to allow us to expense the amount that we're out of pocket and we are out of pocket only $20,000 if at the end of its useful life we're going to give 5 k back so that's why they make us subtract it and we divide that amount by the years of useful life and that's five years in this case so when you take that you end up with four thousand dollars of depreciation expense every year four thousand per year using the straight line method so we'll go ahead and put that down here it is the easiest method so let's go to double declining but balance method. There's a few rules and things you have to know to be able to do this method. The first one is that you have to calculate a rate. And because it's called the double declining balance, we take the number two and divide by the years of useful life to get a rate of depreciation. Now, if it were triple declining balance, which you'll never see, that would be three divided by years of useful life. So you can see where the two comes from. The second thing you need to know is that we're only going to depreciate under this method until our net book value equals our salvage value. We don't subtract salvage value up front in this method, and so therefore we only depreciate it down to the salvage value, and then we carry it at that on our books. And the third thing to know is pretty much the formula that we're going to use to come up with our depreciation expense. It's the net book value of the asset times that rate we calculated, and that equals our depreciation expense each year. Now, net book value is simply the truck's value minus any accumulated depreciation that we've taken at that point. All right, so in year one, we haven't taken any depreciation yet. So we need to figure out at the end of year one, how much should we take? At the beginning of the year, the net book value of the truck is what we bought it for. It's $25,000. So we're going to take $25,000 times the rate, which in this case is 2 divided by the years of useful life. 2 divided by 5. That ends up equaling 40% or 0.4 as we're going to use here. So what we come up with is that our depreciation expense in the first year that we can take is $10,000. And we'll put that down here for year one. As you can see, this is an accelerated depreciation method. It's way more than the straight line will allow you to take in the first year. Well, then what do we do in year two? We take the net book value. Well, didn't we just take in year one $10,000 of depreciation expense? Sure did. So accumulated depreciation is $10,000 in it. And so we have to take $25,000 minus $10,000. That's our net book value at, at the beginning of year two. So that's $15,000 times 0.4, our depreciation expense in year two is going to equal $6,000, still more than the straight line amount.
and put that down here in year two. And then in year three, we just continue on with the same thing. $15,000 minus an additional $6,000 that we've taken leaves us a net book value of $9,000 at the beginning of year three. So our depreciation expense at the end of year three is going to be $3,600. Oh, now suddenly we're less than the year three. It's going to cross over, as you see, where we start out faster and then end up going slower towards the end. Okay, year four, 9000 minus 3600 more of depreciation expense leaves us a net book value of 5400 times 0.4 is, uh-oh, we have an issue. Look at rule two. It says we can only depreciate it down until the net book value is equivalent to the salvage value. Well, how much have we taken so far? We, we have taken $10,000 plus $6,000 plus $3,600 of depreciation expense. $19,600 of depreciation expense so far. Guess what? We can only take 20000 We cannot take the full amount. We can only take the remaining $400 of depreciation expense in year four. And then in year five, we can't take any. So it's a big fat zero in year five. This one is very accelerated depreciation. So remember rule two. Don't go below salvage value. To leave 5000 on the books, you can only take away 20000 And if you add up the straight line depreciation expense, it's $20,000. Same with the double declining balance. It's still just $20,000 that you can take, the amount that you're out of pocket. So let's move on to units of production. What we do here is the same as the numerator for straight line. We take the cost minus the salvage value. The only one that doesn't subtract salvage value up front is double declining balance. All the other ones do. And we divide by not years of useful life, but units of useful life. A un when we use this method, it's because the asset is not really defined by or used up by a number of years. It's used up more by usage. And so we divide by, we, we say, okay, well, let's not say it has a five-year life. Let's say this p asset is going to be used up when it hits 100,000 miles. So we're going to depreciate it across the miles. So we put units of useful life, and we estimate 100,000 miles of useful life. If it's a piece of equipment, it might be 250,000 machine hours. Whatever it is, whatever uses up the asset is what you put in the denominator. So in this case, we end up with a, a cost per mile. And what that's going to equal is 20 cents per mile. Well, then to find our depreciation expense, it depends how much we use it. So, 20 cents per mile. In mile one, or, I'm sorry, in year one, as you see above, our mileage was 75,000 miles. We're going to take that times 20 cents per mile, and we end up with $15,000 of depreciation expense in the first year because we had heavy, heavy usage. Pretty good. Now, the next year we, we have a slow year, and our business only uses that truck 20,000 miles. So times 20 cents a mile, we only depreciate $4,000 in year two. See how our depreciation expense fluctuates with our usage. Now, in year three, we drive 40,000 miles. And 40,000 miles times 20 cents a mile is $8,000. Uh-oh, we run into a problem. We can't use that. 
we can only depreciate up to what we're out of pocket, which is $20,000. So we can really only take a thousand dollars worth of depreciation expense in year three. And none, even if we're still using the truck, of course, none in years four and five. Now, I know there's nothing you'd rather do than go practice these methods, so I'll let you go now. Have fun and calculate away. See you in the next video.